Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.7.16 and the community mod A4E-C Skyhawk. Uh, this is a very impressive mod that's been created by the community. It has a complete externalized flight model, uh, one of the few um, community mods to actually have such a thing. And it also has really extensive systems modeling, which as you all know is something I'm very, uh, very into. Um, as far as capabilities go, it's quite a capable aircraft. It's a primarily ground attack aircraft, has five underwing hardpoints, and it's it's possible to launch this aircraft from airfields, but also from aircraft carriers. It's, it's naval capable. Um, it has many of the capabilities of modern aircraft. It has a navigational computer, it has an air-to-ground radar, uh, it has a radar altimeter and all kinds of other stuff. So it can do most of the same kinds of things that a modern aircraft can do, uh, but because it has its origins in the 1950s, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit more complex to set the avionics up, uh, to say the very least. Uh, this particular version, the A4E, is a slightly later model. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure when this particular version was introduced. But um, it's, uh, it's nonetheless, even though it's somewhat upgraded, it is still uh, a pretty early ground attack aircraft. Um, so, without any further ado, let's jump into the cockpit uh, and let's do as I did with the Super Tucano and simply start the aircraft up uh, and fly it around a little bit. This won't be an actual tutorial because I, I've not actually familiarized myself enough with this aircraft as yet. Uh, however, this aircraft is quite complete and does have a complete manual. Uh, and so in the future, it would be possible for me to do a series of tutorials on it. So uh, let me know if that's something you would like to see. Uh, first thing I'm going to show off is the kneeboard that comes with this uh, module. This is one of a few different things that I kind of feel like all aircraft should have in the sim. Um, this is fantastically complete. Uh, it looks a lot like a kind of quick reference uh, pilot's operation handbook, uh, and it completes, uh, it, uh, sorry, it includes full checklists, uh, which I'm going to make use of uh, for this startup. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is get the ground crew to connect the, the ground power, because uh, this aircraft doesn't have a battery, which is fairly common for naval aircraft of this period. So we need the ground power, and just like with the C-101 from Ergis, we have a lovely 3D model for that as well. And this is a combined ground power unit and huffer. So this is actually where we're getting our, our air supply from to spin the engine. So very, very nice. And with that connected, you can see that um, some of the instruments have come to life and we've got warning lights uh, and the gun sight illuminated. Uh, next thing we do is actually just hit the starter button to start the engine. Uh, one thing to make sure, it's a little bit finicky, um, there's a couple of right clicks that you do on the throttle to put it into different detents. You have to make sure that your throttle was at 0% when you loaded the aircraft, and you have to make sure that you haven't moved it before you start the engine, otherwise this process tends to fail. So let me adjust the camera so we can see the engine instruments. We've got RPM here, and we've got fuel, uh, no actually that's exhaust temperature here. Uh, I want to right click the starter button, and the engine will start to spin. On passing 5%, we right click the throttle, and that engages the igniters. We then have exhaust temperature. As it passes 10%, we right click again, and that puts the throttle into the idle position. Uh, and the, the engine will now continue to spin up, uh, and at the right moment, the starter button will pop out. It'll stabilize at around about 56% RPM. So we'll let that come up. really nicely modeled cockpit as well I think just look at all this old school glory in here oh there we go bunch of the warning lights went out starter switch popped back up uh, and the engine is now stabilized so let's ask the ground crew to turn off that ground power and let's consult that checklist um, so yeah all the warnings are out uh, now, a lot of the equipment in the aircraft has quite a long startup time, uh, so we're going to go ahead and start up a bunch of that in just a moment. But first, let's close the canopy, get rid of some of that noise. Uh, so, the APG-53 radar, is that this one? No, that's not that one, that's the Doppler nav. Uh, radar control panel is here on the left console. I'm going to put that radar into standby, that takes three minutes to warm up. The AFCS, which is the kind of 
automatic flight control system. That takes 90 seconds, so we're going to pop that into standby as well. Doppler nav takes five minutes, so we'll pop that into standby now. Navigation computer is two minutes, that'll go into standby now. Takan takes three minutes to warm up, so that gets popped into receive mode. Uh, and the ICLS uh, oh, it actually claims that has a zero startup time, so we don't need to worry about that one too much. Where is the ICLS anyway? Is that on this side? Interesting. I actually don't know where the ICLS is. That's uh, that's perhaps a problem for another day. <laughs> we'll worry about that another time. Uh, cool, so that's that's everything on the engine start checklist. Let's flip to the next page before taxi. So ground power is off, canopy is closed. Uh, let's make sure we turn on our radio. Transmit, receive, and ground. Uh, TACAN, we already turned that on. AFC, AFCS is on. Uh, Going to turn on the radar altimeter. All we have to do is push in this little knob. There's really not much indication as to whether it's on or off. Uh, I found that a bit confusing before. Uh, we're now going to go through the master test. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to hide the stick, actually. Um, I'm going to hide the kneeboard while we do this. There's a button right in the center of the cockpit. We push and hold that, and all the warnings will come on. We can basically ensure that all of our bulbs are working. We also get... Uh, the, the kind of warning sound. Fuel quantity and liquid oxygen quantity is also reset to zero, and then we reset. So we're now happy that all of our systems are working correctly. Uh, we could then run through the Doppler nav test and navigation computer test, but I'm not going to do that today. Uh, we're not going to bother with doing all those tests. Next, oxygen comes on. Uh, radar we've already put into standby. Wheels and flaps, uh, we check. Wheels are down, flaps are up, that's good. Uh, master exterior light switch goes to on, that's on the throttle here, right click brings it forwards uh, and actually before I started the engine I should have put my anti-collision light on, I forgot. Gonna put fuselage to bright, wing and tail lights to bright as well. And do I want interior lights? I think we're okay without them for today. Uh, so that's all fine. Uh, and that's the that's the before taxi checklist complete. Uh, I'm not going to adjust anything else until we get close to the uh, runway. And we're here in Mount Pleasance, by the way, in the South Atlantic uh, map. This is my first time flying here. So, uh, where is the runway? Oh yeah, I can just taxi forwards. That's great. Okie dokie. Uh, now, this aircraft doesn't have nose wheel steering. It's uh, differential braking only. So, we're going to throttle up a little bit, get the aircraft moving. Just overcome the friction there. There we go. Come on. Oh, actually, I tell you what it is. As with many uh, modules, the uh, wheel brakes are reversed, so I have to just very quickly adjust that. That would explain why I'm not going anywhere. It thinks that my thinks that my toe brakes are jammed on, which they're not. Okay, so you want to give it a bit of throttle, but then you have to kind of dab one side or the other of the wheel brakes in order to control the taxi. And you don't want to go too fast, but you also can't really stop at any time, otherwise you sort of lose directional control. So, um, it's a tricky one. <laughs> it's a tricky one to fly this. And I, I've set it up for some stereotypical Falkland weather here with the the rain battering down on us, just for a laugh. Now, I'm going to have to be quite careful once I get this one airborne, because it's uh, it's well known for having a terrifying roll rate, uh, and it's, it's fairly easy to just about lose control of the thing, if you're not careful. Right, here we go. <laughs> this is very old school. Very old school, using the old differential braking. Just gonna adjust that gun sight a little bit, it's a bit bright. Oh dear. I think I locked up. Oh this is this is unfortunate. We're going to lose control over it already. This will be very embarrassing if I get stuck in the grass. A 
If I didn't, no, I didn't hit that obstruction. Good. Right, I'm gonna have to stop. Oh, this is very bad. This is very bad. I'm not used to flying aircraft that are like this. So you actually, you don't want to slam on the brakes because this aircraft doesn't have any anti-lock. Uh, so all you do is you kind of lose directional control uh, and then the aircraft skids, which is not ideal. So let's make our way back to the runway. Yeah, it's like gentle pushies. Gentle pushies of the nose wheel steering to actually control it. There we go. There we go. Sometimes you have to kind of stab one one wheel brake and then stab the other one a little bit. Yeah, this is this is actually really hard. So, we want to make sure that we're on the center line and that we've got the aircraft kind of going straight down the runway before we stop. That's not too bad. I think we're fairly happy with that because what's going to happen is as we apply power, we're going to kind of lose control of it because we don't have much rudder authority until about 70 knots. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, this is not... I actually need to get it going again because it's... it wants to turn left and like as I apply the power, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, this is tricky. Pilots in the old days, you know, they had their... Uh, had their work cut out for them. Okay. There, we're going to stop it there. So I'm on the tow brakes now, and let's pull up the uh, before takeoff checklist. So radar altimeter is confirmed on uh, armament panel. All of this is off. This is the master arm here. Uh, so guns are also not armed. Bombs are off. All the weapon selectors are off. Mode selector is off. Uh, the Doppler nav system, that should have warmed up by now. We pop it into land mode. Uh, the navigation computer, I'm going to set it to D1. Uh, the navigation computer has two waypoints. Uh, that's that's all it has the capacity for. <laughs> so I'm going to select number one, uh, and I'm going to pop my um, uh, needles into nav computer mode, and it's going to show me the direction to my first waypoint. Uh, spoiler arm switch to off. Uh, that's confirmed. It's off. Uh, APC power switch is off. Confirmed. Chaff power switch on. I'm going to turn on my ECM system and pop this into standby. Uh, MCL, I actually don't know what the MCL is, uh, so I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, rudder trim should be centralized, and the nose trim, we're looking for 8 degrees up. So let's pull 8 degrees up. There, that's takeoff trim set. Flaps, we're going to want uh, half flaps. Uh, those are here on this instrument, so I'm going to bring them down to the half position. Uh, they don't have detents, they they just freely move to basically wherever you want them to. And that is everything. Uh, we have the aircraft fully set up. Uh, so, let me just have a very quick scan of the cockpit, make sure that I've not missed anything. Uh, but this looks pretty good. One thing that I might do actually, just so I've got an easy way of returning, is I'll set the TACAN for Mount Pleasant. Uh, so we're on, what is this here? 59 X-ray. So let's make sure our TACAN is all set up. Uh, 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 five, nine, TNR, and I'll pop the volume on just a touch. Yep, we've got Morse code. That's good. Uh, and then can I make that appear on here? Guess that's correct. Yeah, no, middle is TACAN. Okay, that's it in TACAN position. That looks correct going to put you into nav computer mode now. Cool, that all looks set up. So now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, for the moment where I might actually embarrass myself a little bit, I'm going to try and take off on this thing. Uh, actually, one thing that I might do before, do I? can I figure out how to turn on the, the radar into its kind of uh, ground mapping mode, I wonder? Search, TC, right, let's, terrain collision I guess that is. Okay. Let's see if we can make that work. And what does this button do? AOA compensation switch. I'm going to leave that off for now. I don't know what that does. Cool. Alrighty. So, I'm going to increase power to about 80% on the brakes. Stable. Off the brakes. 
And I'm going to just be very gentle in increasing the power. And I'm going to use the uh, wheel brakes to keep me going down the runway. Bit of forward pressure to keep the nose wheel on the ground. Speed's coming up. 100 knots. 120. Going to release and pitch. <sighs> Oof. Gear can come up. Oh wow, yeah, the roll is crazy on this. And we're going to bring the flaps all the way up now. And I've got low altitude warning showing just now, and now I'm above my low altitude setting. And I need to trim nose down a bit, because it's, uh, it's accelerating fairly quickly, and it's desperate to go nose up. Let me bring the camera out a little bit here. Okay, oof, yes, there is that uh, often spoke of roll rate there. Yeah, that's me. I'm barely putting any pressure on it, and I get a little bit of Dutch roll out of that as well, so I need to be careful. Going to bring the throttle back a touch, and we're going to make our way around. Quick check on the external view. Yeah, isn't that nice? Very cool. Okay, I'm going to see if I can do a low pass of the airfield of Mount Pleasant. Aircraft is completely um, unladen today. We've got no uh, no weapons, no uh, underwing stores. Oof, yeah, it's very... Like, in the roll, it is so fidgety. And there's the ground returns showing up on the radar for the uh, terrain collision system. That's pretty cool. How that thing works, I don't actually know. Uh, so that's something I'd need to read the manual and... and uh, learn how it all works. Now, of course, this aircraft... Oh, there we go. That's my low-altitude warning. That's actually quite handy. Get it nicely trimmed. Uh, yeah, so th th there's no... Um, there is a stability augmentation system here, which should take some of the pilot-induced oscillation out. Uh, but there's no... Uh, I don't believe there's an autopilot, and there's no fly-by wire. So it, it's very possible to make bad things happen. I'm trying to be very careful as I do this this loop here. You don't want to pull too hard on the stick. Because you'll probably get... I'm assuming I'm going to get a wing drop if I'm not careful. There we go, coming all the way around. Yeah, yeah it manoeuvres beautifully, actually. Really, really nice to, to fly this thing. And there we go. We were all the way over. Nice and easy. So, of course, this aircraft is capable of employing all the usual uh, dumb bombs, rockets, clusters, and so on. Um, I think it even has some guided missile possibilities. Um, and it has the labs system, which a few of the aircraft in the 50s and 60s had. Um, it has the radar, the air-to-ground radar. Uh, quite a lot of cool functionality. It also has an ECM pod, and it can also uh, drop chaff. I don't know if it has the capacity to drop flares as well. I don't know exactly how that works. What's this? So, dis yeah, it's two dispensers of chaff, apparently. Um, so, I don't know if it has any... Uh, I don't know if it, ha if it has any flare um, capacity or not. Let's see. Let's see if I can get it to depart. So, we're going we're gonna to throttle back and we're going to put it into a climb. And we're going to see how it acts as it enters into a low-speed stall. We're coming up. Giving ourselves some altitudes to recover in case this all goes horribly wrong. Yeah, speed's not bleeding off too fast. Let's uh, pop out the speed brakes. Get a bit of vibration with the speed brake out. Let's pop it back in again. There we go. Okay. So, I'm going to hold it level as the speed comes off. I'm trying to zero out the VSI. Approaching 150 knots in clean configuration. Let's see where it breaks and what how it behaves. I've got the stick almost the whole way back now. Lots of buffet, but it doesn't want to let go just yet. Sticks full back. I've hit the stop. Left wing dropping. And it's actually totally benign. It just it dropped one wing gently, and then it 
it really, it was just going to hang there. It wasn't going to do anything. <laughs> okay, very, very easy to deal with. And I've throttled back up again. We're in a descent. We'll get that speed back. And yeah, that is like ridiculously easy to deal with. Okie dokie. Very simple. So I'm actually going to fly towards uh, Waypoint 1 now using the HSI. Going to do a flight out towards Port Stanley. And then we're going to return using the TACAN uh, to Mount Pleasant. So this is reading 21 miles uh, out to Port Stanley. I've got to say, this thing is really nice to fly. Of course, I have it in a completely clean configuration. Uh, you know, I'm sure once you start loading it up with fuel and weapons and all manner of other stuff, it will become less and less fun to fly. Uh, but in a clean configuration, it's just so easy. So, let me see here. Yeah, actually, 24 miles to Port Stanley here, along the coast. Very nice. Yeah, that roll is a bit hard to deal with. I've got quite a long um, stick uh, with an extension, so, uh, you know, my... It's going to be easier for me to do this than it is for some of you with perhaps shorter desktop sticks. Uh, but I would probably put a curve on this in the middle of your roll because it's it's quite a lot of roll authority you have in this thing. Uh, and of course, as it accelerates, it just gets worse and worse. Uh, now, our top speed, we should be capable of uh, about 600 knots at altitude. Uh, I'm approaching 500 now. So not a supersonic aircraft, but uh, you know, still perfectly speedy enough. It's quite a noisy fellow as well, <laughs> as you can hear. Uh, all right, 17 miles to go, just following the needle. We'll do a quick flyby of Port Seton and then uh, make a direct return to Mount Pleasant. And then I'll see if I can land the thing, which is something I've never tried. You're going to be seeing me landing for the first time. Not only have you seen me taxiing this thing for the first time and embarrassing myself in the process, but you're going to see me landing it for the first time as well. Okay, so it's cruising along here. Just over 3,000 feet. And that's us just over 500 knots now. I have to avoid the temptation to yank the stick too much because, uh, again, with no fly-by wire or kind of other protection mechanisms, the aircraft will quite happily let me break it. Okay, so we should be approaching Port Seton any moment now. Yeah, running, f uh, reading five miles to go. There it is. Airfield in sight. Okay, I'm going to fly right down the runway, give them a little bit of a buzz. And uh, let's preemptively flip that back into Tacan. There we go. We now have Tacan. Yeah. There's a lot of complexity in the aircraft systems, uh, but the basics are fairly easy to get your head around. Okay, coming back around for the Tacan now. And let's regain some altitude here. Okay, rolling out on direct Takan heading. <laughs> I like all of these little pull handles we've got down here as well. Emergency gear, emergency bomb release, manual flight control, and uh, emergency generator. You just yank on these if you have problems. We've got the uh, the hook. I can pop the hook down just by flipping that there. There we go. There's our hook. I'll pop that back up now. And yeah, lots and lots of interesting controls here. Spoilers and all kinds of stuff. I wonder if we use the spoilers on landing. Let's actually review that checklist while we're on our way back. Uh, so what do we got here? 
Taxi, take off, landing checklist. Okay, so 225 in the brake, speed brakes out, flaps half down, landing gear down, spoiler arm switch, AF only, airfield only, I guess. So yeah, we use the landing spoilers on landing at an airfield. Uh, we don't put the hook down. Uh, we want to be 170 knots and 125 at touchdown. Okay, seems fairly simple. So yeah, use the speed brakes, half laps, gear down, spoiler armed. Let's give it a go. Let's see if we can make this work. And of course, if I, you know, if I was being uh, very judicious here, uh, I could set the course heading on the Tacan for the the runway in use and so on. But I'm not going to bother to do any of that right now. Right, let's uh, bring ourselves down a little. Let's get below this cloud. We have the radar. It'll give us an impression of what the terrain is like up ahead. Cruising along still at just over 500 knots. Let's see how quickly it slows down once we get to the airfield. Uh, what's the distance to go? Is that... Am I reading that correctly? Is that 10 miles? Yeah, I think we get about 10 miles inbound on the Tacan. Oops. Be careful with the rudder as well. Okay, I'm going to bring the throttle back now. Let's have the, the speed bleed off a bit. Seven miles. Going to pop out full speed brakes. Oh, actually, they won't come out. Ah, okay. There we go, now they're coming out. I guess I was too fast before. So speed brakes are out, we're getting a nice buffet here. Let's bring them back in again. There we go. Get her trimmed for the lower airspeed here. And I think I've got the runway in sight. Yep, I've got the runway in sight, so I'm going to let the speed continue to come down. Actually, yeah, speed brakes out. Let's get that speed off. And before I forget, let's get the spoilers armed because I don't have them on my HOTAS. Let's bring the throttle up. Gear down. More trim. Flaps to half. Not too bad. A little bit more flap. That's it. That's it. Keep the aircraft coming around. Low altitude. Give it a bit more power. Yeah, I'm bringing this in pretty flat. Probably not ideal. Oof, yeah. Oh, I'm going to land early. I landed early. Off on the throttle. Ugh, that was a bad show. Spoilers are out. Nice. Well, luckily, it's designed to land on aircraft carriers, so it took it. <laughs> it took my bad handling there. And um, we're gently on the brakes. Again, there's no uh, anti-lock on this, so I have to be careful. I also need to uh, alternate kind of a little bit between left and right to keep it going straight down the runway. There we go. Yeah, it does take a little while to get it stopped. As is often the case with these older aircraft, the the wheel brakes are not the best. But there we go, we made it. That's pretty cool. Not bad for my first attempt. So the flaps split uh, in order to form spoilers, that's pretty cool. You can see there as well, we've got our leading edge um, flaps or slats, which are automated in this aircraft. Still got the flaps at uh, 50%, spoilers are extended, speed brakes are out. Uh, so that's that's basically just about everything I can chuck out <laughs> on this aircraft. So there you go. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, just a little bit of an overview of the A4E community mod. It uh, looks really, really cool in my opinion. The flight model is fantastic. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting my head around the different systems in this aircraft and actually trying to use it to attack targets. Uh, I think that'll be a bit of fun. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.